This is the plaintiff, Mark Anthony Ashley. He says he met the defendant at a club. The guy befriended him and then proceeded to steal from him. That's right, he got his debit card from him, stole things from his house, and he's suing the loser for the $4,955 he's most definitely owed. This is the defendant, Jeff Allen Mesker Jr. He says he met the plaintiff at a nightclub and the guy bought him drinks all night long. That same night, he went home with him and the plaintiff gave him all this stuff. Phones, hard drives, stuff like that. The plaintiff told him he wasn't using them and that he should sell them. Looking back, he thinks the lonely guy was trying to buy his affection or something like that. He drew the line when the guy asked him to take a strange picture of them together. And now he's being sued? Police! He's accused of being sticky-fingered. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $5,000 for defamation of character and pain and suffering. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says he met a guy at a club. They became fast friends. The guy got his debit card, and he's an outright thief. But the defendant says the plaintiff was flat out attracted to him and gave him a bunch of stuff. It's the case of, hey, buddy, can you spare a debit card? Douglas, Mark Anthony Ashley. Yes, ma'am. You are suing Jeff Allen Mesker, Jr. for $4,955 in damages. Uh, for slander, defamation of character, and various items you say he stole from you. You have counterclaiming against him $5,000 for pain and suffering and defamation of character. Let me hear from you first, Mr. Ashley. What's going on? Um, I met the defendant and his roommate on February the 7th of this year. Okay, now a, that his roommate or former roommate is the gentleman who's with you as your yeah, witness. Uh, Brett Gosnell. Okay. Um, and we Where met did at, you meet him? At a, a local uh, gay nightclub in downtown Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Um, I... Got to talking to the two of them, um, and as we got to talking, uh, Brett and I wanted to play some pool, and as we played some pool, I had a debit card in my pocket that I knew that I, um, it was solely as a debit card, and it only had like $42 worth of cash on it. So while me and Brett were playing pool, and not to be interrupted, I gave Mr. Mesker my debit card and said... I'm sorry, you just met the guy, and you gave him your debit card? And his pen number. Just a second, I'm not talking to you. You gave the guy your debit card with yeah, your code? Yeah, because I knew at the time, like I said, there was only $42 on oh, the okay. card. Oh, okay, so you were willing to forego $42. Go ahead, yeah, so what I, happens? I, I wasn't concerned that there you know, would be a loss of $42. Oh, are you so, concerned that he, somebody might get your debit card and now knows your code three days later or ever? Well, All right, so go obviously ahead. now I am. Oh, um, now you are? Yeah. How'd you um, get through life up to now? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, so... Um, I gave the card to Mr. Mesker and told him to go to the bar and uh, you know, start us up a tab for some drinks. When Mr. Mesker returned with the drinks, I set my drink down on the, on the table and told him I needed to go use the restroom. And while I was gone to the restroom, he carried on a conversation with Ms., Mr. Gosnell and showed him pictures that he had taken of my cell phone, I mean of my debit card, and told Mr. Gosnell that he was going to take me for everything I was worth. Um, Stand up, please. Why don't you tell me about that? Um, the very moment we met him, like, he went to go do something and Mr. Mesker turned around and told me, you know, he was going to use him. Like what, after He was going to use him meaning what? He said, I'm going to use him for all his money, all his stuff. And then... Did he show you a picture of the debit card? Yes, ma'am. The front and the back. So you had, did you have a, a suspicion that he was going to be committing a fraud with the debit card? Yes, ma'am. So the fine, upstanding citizen that you are, you did what? I didn't tell him until later because I was waiting until I moved out of his apartment. So did you say anything to anybody? No, ma'am. But I should believe you today. You didn't say anything to anybody until you moved out of his apartment. Yeah. And when you moved out of his apartment, you moved out with some financial dispute, correct? No, ma'am. Does he say you owe him money? He says that, but... Right, okay. So... You see how maybe you make me nervous to believe you right off the bat when you didn't say jack to anybody about any of this until after moving out and, you know, him having issues with you about money? If I can interrupt for just a second. No, you can't. I'm sorry. Right? Because a fine upstanding young man would say something to him, say something to him, you know, and show a little backbone, right? Okay. So according to you, you hear this from him after the fact. Tell me about before the fact. What happens that night? The, the first night, 
Mr. Mesker and um, Mr. Gosnell followed me back to my apartment. When we got back to my apartment, they left their vehicle there, and then we got in my vehicle and went to go get something to eat. Okay. I, I suffer from anxiety and have um, anxiety medication that I keep with me, and that medication was in my center console. When I went out the next morning to get that medication out of my console, the bottle was there, but the bottle of the contents was gone. And there had been how many pills in there before that? 20 plus. Okay. There had been there the, the night so before. So the, the fine upstanding citizen that you are, you immediately have nothing else to do with either one of them, right? No. No. You, in fact, liked him. Right. Right. So then you enmesh him into your life for the next, I don't know how many, stop nodding because I am not even, wait till I get to you. Okay, so you enmesh him into your life as much as you can, even though you want, see, here's the thing. You want me to believe stuff you guys didn't believe then. So you want to see, look at the evidence, Judge, they stole my pills. But apparently you didn't conclude that because you couldn't wait to be able to get to know him. You see what I mean? But you want me to conclude that they're thieves. You want me to conclude that. Okay, go on. What's your next clue that you ignore? Um, we go into my apartment and Mr. Mesker um, asks for a tour of the apartment and Mr. Gosnell uh, sits down on the love seat in my apartment and um, I've got a, a cat and he's playing with the cat and um, the entire time they were in the apartment, Mr. Gosnell stayed in the love seat and didn't go anywhere. Mr. Mesker followed me around the apartment um, going through all my belongings. I'm sorry, with you? Like I would be like in front of him going to the next room and he would be behind me like, and as I was walking through the apartment and showing him around, I didn't notice him taking the things that he was taking. Oh, I'm taking. sorry, hold on. You're showing a complete stranger around your, your apartment at four in the morning, but you're not turning around and he's not in front of you and you're not talking next to him and you're not eyeballing him. You're merely leading him with a blindfold so he can take a bunch of stuff. What happens next? Um, he sees a uh, hard drive, uh, external hard drive that I have in my um, apartment and he says, can I have this? And I said, no, uh, you can't. The next morning, I'm cleaning up my apartment and I noticed that that um, hard drive is gone. Um, he comes over that next night and I, I, I didn't confront him and say, I'm very upset with you because you took that hard drive and I told you you couldn't. As the, um, each night goes by- When did you meet him, what day? February um, 7th. February, okay. February 7th. Each night goes by, you see him every night? Uh, every night for six nights Are you straight. two romantic? Um, we are hugging each other, um, kissing a little bit, um, and that's about the sum of it. Uh, but you, every, in your mind, you're dating. You're starting to date. You're starting to get to know each other. Right. Okay. Um, and it's every single night. Every single night for the first six nights. When did you notice the stuff was missing? You are complaining that two, two ga Samsung Galaxy phones were stolen, cologne was stolen, two earbuds were stolen, and a bunch of other stuff that eventually got returned was stolen. I want you to tell me when you noticed that all this stuff was missing from your house. Okay. The hard drive, the pills, and the two phones were the first day. Okay, so the hard drive, the pills, and two phones you noticed missing, and there were two strangers in your house that you picked up at a bar. Right. Okay, and, and so your first reaction to that is to immediately invite them back every day for six days. Not to invite them back. I mean, they came back, I confronted him about it, and he said, I'll bring this stuff back to you, and every day it was the same, same story. I'll bring it back to you the next day. I'll bring, I'll bring all of the stuff back to you, or I'll bring the hard drive back to you that I'll I thought? I'll bring all the stuff back to you. Okay, so di it didn't occur to you to say, this is a scam artist. I gave him my debit card. I gave him my code on an account I haven't closed down. At, at this Nothing, point, Nothing, wait, what more do you need? Somebody to hit you over the head with a baseball bat? You got had by both of them. What's wrong with you? At this point, I knew nothing about the debit card whatsoever. No, stop, my friend. You knew that you had given him your debit card with your code that was an account that was still open. And you knew that missing from your house were pills, the hard drive, and two cell phones, all of which got stolen from you. Correct. Where do you put two and two together? Or he was just so delicious you didn't care? No, he's... Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because the you. problem you have as a litigant is that you are continuously inviting him to your house over and over to continue to steal stuff from you. That's crazy. No, I mean, I, the only reason I'm inviting him, uh, him back over is, one, I, I wanted to continue to get to know him, but at the same time, he kept telling me every night that he was gonna be bringing these things back to, to return to me, and he never did. Okay, so now so, bring me to February 14th. He Fe doesn't call Fe you. February 14th. You think it's Valentine's Day, somebody you're starting to date should call you. He doesn't call you. February 15th, you hospitalize yourself with chest pains. And then when you get out of the hospital, you call the police, because now he's ignoring you. And you tell the police he's stolen all my stuff. When does Brett 
find Jesus and all of a sudden come and tell you all the things that you, that you hear. Mm-hmm. Well, I contacted Brett on the 18th and at- told him that I had gone with the police to Mr. Gosnell's apartment and they confiscated uh, all of the things back that he had taken from the apartment. You're talking about Mr. Mesker's apartment? Mr. Mesker's apartment. Mr. Gosnell, was he still living there or no? No, he had moved out the, uh, right. the day before. Let me ask you, what's going on? Your Honor, first of all, can I please start by saying I never had any type of relationship with this gentleman. I never indicated to this gentleman I was ever going to have a relationship with him. Never did I kiss him. Because really all you wanted to do was was rob him blind? No, ma'am. I want you to tell me, on the day that you met him at the bar, did you photograph his debit card? No, ma'am. Did you tell him that you were going to take him for everything he had? No, ma'am. Okay, I want to believe that, but here's a problem I'm having. Apparently, you had a bunch of his stuff when the cops went to your house. Uh, your Honor, so it starts to sound yeah. like maybe there's a little something to that story when you're telling me I had zero interest in it within him. Zero, Judge. I wanted nothing to do with this guy. He repulses me, but I went to his house every day for six days. Well, Your Honor, when he brought the cops to my house, he's making it sound completely different. When we walked into the club that night, he seeked me out. The first thing he said to me was, you're hot, I'm buying your drinks all night. And he knows that he admitted giving me his credit card and his PIN, com- pin number, he told me I was a great person, he wanted to do everything in the world for me, allowed me to have that. I never did it. He wrote that stuff down for me, Your Honor. Second of What'd all- What'd you do with it? Huh? I threw it away. So what it all comes down to, Your Honor, the reason I went back for six days, Your Honor, I was drugged with Xanax uh, and iced tea at his household. I was also- When? Attempted to be sexually- when? on the very first night. And he told me verbally, and I was in fear, I had a security system installed everything, he told me he would harm me and my family, that he could kill me and get away with it, but yet he would be alive and get to live in a mental institute. This scared me and my family so bad. That, that you he, went back every day for six he days? He told me that I had to comply with him. How is it he, you're going home each day, you're sobering up from whatever he's drugging you with, and then you go back the next day? Well, How do you do that? Well, because you're in fear. But then on day, on day six, when apparently he's asking you to return stuff, then you're magically not in fear. And that's the last time that he threatened me, and I never went back, Your Honor, because I decided so to what take happened? legal action. So what was different from the threat from day one, if that's what kept you coming, from the threat from the next day? Is any of this stuff true, Brett? No, ma'am. Were you there every night? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so go on. So does it make sense that the defendant was drugged and threatened and then comes back six nights in a row? I don't think it was because if he was, he wouldn't want to come back to see that guy again. One would think, right? What do you think? I would agree with that. I mean, it's, you know, wrong me once, shame on you. Wrong me twice, shame on me, so. And wrong me six times? Then, you know. Shame, 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 shame on you. Gotcha. Going inside the courtroom. So, once again, Your Honor, I'm just trying to tell the truth. I know what the man did to me. I can't prove it, but spiritually, one day. Spiritually. Spiritually, God knows what was happening. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm just saying, Your Honor. I'm Don't being... you dare. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I want you to stop talking. I want you to listen to my question. Yes, ma'am. I'm having trouble envisioning a scenario where someone is drugging you and threatening to kill you but giving you gifts. Well, and at the very I'm beginning, also ha- be... Let me tell you what else I'm having trouble with, which I'd like you to address. Yes, ma'am. I'm having trouble with the fact that each item that was found in your house is a small item capable of easy concealment. Yeah. I did not steal those, Your Honor. Like I said, the very first night I met him, he is saying things, okay, if things disappeared, why weren't they all made on the initial report, Your Honor, as JSO stated? Hand me all of the police reports. Okay. Oh, let's look at your text. These are between you and him? Mm-hmm. You're texting him, hi, it's Mark, at 1.54 in the morning. Here's his answer at 2.22 in the morning. Hey, bro. Here's him trying to reach you. I tried to call you, left you a voicemail. Call me when you get a chance, bro. Then he tells you at 2.15 in the afternoon, I tried calling you back. Then you say to him, well, I never got a call from you. I promise, bro, you don't sound like somebody who's uh, been the victim of a sexual assault or attempted. You don't sound like somebody who's getting drugged. You don't sound like somebody whose family was threatened. You tell me how this sounds like what you're telling me is the truth. Your Honor, I mean, when you're victimized, nobody ever plays and nobody ever acts the same way. You have a $2,000 lawsuit for slander and defamation of character. Explain what you're talking about. Because when he took out his order of restraint uh, against me, first he says that I sexually assaulted him in my home while in the company of Brett. He he filed a restraining order against you? Yes. And accused you of sexual assault? Yes. He says that I sexually assaulted him in my home the very first night that he was at my residence. Of actually completing a sexual assault? That I reached into his pants and told him, uh, according to the the restraining order. Let me see it. um, I have a question for you. Did you tell them that 
he, that he sexually assaulted you? I said you? that he attempted to put his hand on my pants, and he did, Your Honor. You had said in your answer to the complaint that he pinned you against a wall. Yeah, he pinned me against the wall, Your Honor, and held me like this, and act like he had a knife or something in his hand and, and pounded the wall, either like he had a knife or something, and looked at me and seriously looked at me in the face and said, either we can do this the hard way or the easy way. And I said, Mark, I said, I don't even know you like this. I said, I don't do want to press in charges. you your answer to the complaint, you never mentioned a knife, you never said anything. I told my parents, they told me to let it, my own parents and family told me to let it go because this guy was, they had already admitted that they would do everything they could to destroy my life and your honor they have been doing so were you there that whole night brett yes ma'am did he try to rape him no ma'am he was did he ever pull a knife out on him no ma'am when you went home with him did he ever say anything about a knife being no, pulled out on him i didn't say it was a knife i said that i thought he either had a knife or something silver okay we're just, we're just, i just want you to stop you have a, a counterclaim against him for five thousand dollars for pain and suffering and defamation of character based on what uh, everything I've, the last four months, Your Honor, I've had to have a security system installed. I had seen his car several times around the area. Mr. Ashley sends you an email on March 10th saying, are you completely out of your mind? I just got off the phone with my bank where I was informed that you attempted 12 times to place orders the day after I met you on a certain website mm -hmm. and have them shipped, billed to someone else's address. Yes, Your Honor. Did you use his car to try to place orders? Your Honor, yes, I did, only because he gave it to me and told me I could, Your Honor. And Your I Honor, he know. gave me his number. I don't number. know. I can't believe either one of you. He gave me his I, to be, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't believe any of the three of you on anything that comes out of your mouth. I just don't. I, I brought with you all, all the evidence to prove to you. No, you uh, haven't. I brought 70 have a, pages. You all have a bunch of papers that document what you all say happened. That's what you got. I you got, you stop. You got you going to the police. Yeah. When? When the guy doesn't return your calls on Valentine's Day. You got you saying, oh, he told me he's going to scam her for everything he's got. When? Well, after you end up moving out and now you have a problem with him about money. I've got you saying, I was drugged. I was attemptedly raped. I was, when? When they send the police over to your house and say that you stole their stuff. You know what you are? You are people who deserve each other. On your claim against him, zero. And on your claim against him, zero. You can't possibly expect the court of law to believe anything that comes out of your mouth. Well, after that testimony, the money stuff is uh, cleared up by a judgment that goes against you. Um, step forward a little bit. What's, what's your reaction to this outcome here now? Uh, I really have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. Are you done with him, the defendant? That, uh, I've, I've been done with him. Right. Uh, and now the money thing? Also, um, the lawsuit's over, so what contact will you have with him at will, any point in the there future? There will be none. None whatsoever? None whatsoever. All right, all right. Right around the corner this way. So he just said uh, he'll have no contact with you whatsoever so. at any time in the future. How does that sound to that you? That sounds excellent, great. I want nothing to do with the Gosnell family, Mr. Mark Ashley. I've been trying to get rid of him and his problems for four months, and today, hopefully this will finally end. If not, we'll be back in court again. All right, Harvey. Okay, I mean, it's just simple. The defendant seems shady, but the plaintiff has the burden of proof, and he is just all over the place.